John. Good morning, David. How are you doing? Living the dream, making a break in concrete. There you go. One of my favorite days. We're going to be talking about one of the coolest concretes in the world. Hoover Dam concrete. Very important concrete in the history of concrete. David knows a lot about Hoover Dam concrete. Uh, David used to be a bus driver. <laughs> Actually, I have done that. No! <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, 15 passenger van. 15 passenger Hey, it still counts, man. Yeah, it still man. counts. No, David was the guy in charge of the, I keep saying 312 dam facilities in the western U.S., but I think it's a few more than that, 400? Yeah, the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation is responsible for about Oh, for around 400 dams 400. in okay. the western United States. So I'd rather be than overshoot it. Yeah, know. about 100 plus concrete. Wicked. Yeah. So um, we're here to talk about one of the con coolest concrete dams in the world, the Hoover Dam. And the reason why we're talking about it today is because I was given a piece of Hoover Dam concrete, and we'll do some close-ups of this here in a minute, by parties undisclosed, although I think I already disclosed it in another video. Might be. Might be. Um, and we're going to talk about three things today, David. Okay. And David is the Hoover Dam concrete guy. I've read a lot of books. I mean, I, I even want to get picture frames of the engineering designs behind, but I, he's, you know, he's done this, and I just run my hand across it, and then... Yeah. So, what we're going to talk about today is three things about Hoover Dam concrete. The cementitious, the aggregate, and the placement, which will include slump in that. And we're only going to allot two minutes for each, because I think I'm editing this video, so we're going to make it a little easier on me. Um, first is cementitious. What is the difference? I guess this is going to turn into an interview. What is the difference between today's cementitious and the cementitious, or the cement, let's just do that, Today's cement and Hoover Dam cement. Well, the cement at Hoover was uh, coarse green, coarse ground. And I do want to spend just a few seconds on sure. the uh, water cement. I mean, this was coming out of the Depression, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. work camp type work. Totally. Before, it was before Abrams Law. <laughs> so it's a 3 two, one yeah, Pretty much. S something to that effect, so, right? Something to that effect. So yeah, it was a, a time of a lot of research in the mix itself because we didn't have a lot of this background theory yet. Wow. So really it was like one of the most innovative times of concrete. Well yeah, that's why it's considered one of the seven modern wonders of the world. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So I do want to add that it's not just the coarseness of the cement that was different, but also the alkalinity. Right. I mean we really wanted to wait that time period to get that strength because of a lot of things, thermal effects, right. um, shrinkage, impact. But we definitely changed our cements so that nowadays we're a lot finer and we have a lot more alkalis in our cement, which give us that 28 day strength in 24 hours, which is a little bit of embellishment. But yeah, yeah, we have a lot higher early strength and perfect. you know, and buildings and need to drive on the pavements and things, we need that. Like, you know, four hour mix designs. In a dam where the construction might take a couple of years before you put the reservoir behind it. You know, you've got time. You've got time and you want to wait. Right. But as you suggest, you don't, don't want that heat. And, you know, I, there's a great book by, uh, I think, Joseph E. Stevens. Uh, it's called Hoover Dam, The Great American Journey. Uh, and it talks about the 28-day strength of the concrete. And it was somewhere between 3,000 and 3,500 PSI. Mm -hmm. And at the 75th anniversary, you know, if either from Katie Bardage's paper on the 75th anniversary, or another gentleman, I believe it was 75, there were some spots where it was 7,500 PSI. Right, Hoover, I mean, when we, I was a materials engineer on that in the late 90s when we cored it, and, you know, it seemed to be strengthening at least some, even after that time. Right, and that's what we get from those coarser grains and that's right. long term. Okay, so let's, let's dive into aggregate, because we're exceeding our time limit here, David. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's gonna be tough, yeah. tough to edit. So, the rock that we use nowadays is something like this, and you can't really see. So that's how big the aggregate is that we use nowadays. One inch diameter, three quarter inch, it falls under a 57, 67, or a 57 or a 67 gradation. Yeah, most pavement, common. Pavements we see inch and a half, sometimes MSA, sometimes up to two, but nothing like 
like this football. So I got to make a Hoover Dam style concrete with some of my buddies years ago. Right. And they asked me if I wanted any um, mementos <laughs> from mixing. So I said, yeah, I want a rock. So this is the type of rock that we were using. Now this is not the only rock that you, that's used in Hoover Dam concrete or dam concrete. Um, when you look at this sample over here, well, you'll see that there's two inch diameter, three inch diameter, maybe a little bit smaller than that on the uh, coarse aggregate size. And then you have your finer three eighths going into your sand. So it's not just a big rock, although there was some big rock in Hoover Dam Concrete. Well, it was, had a gradation for the larger rock. I mean, right. just, just like any mixed design. But when we pulled the cores from Hoover, um, you know, sometimes you'd have a, a cylinder that would come into the lab. <laughs> and so here's the cylinder, and here's this, here's this rock sticking out the side. So, I mean, this particular piece was a piece that could be polished, you know, right. and, and used as a cross section. But, right. yeah, I mean, you saw a football sticking right through the core. Um, and you pull four from Hoover. That's so flippin' awesome. <laughs> so flippin' awesome. So when we do uh, samples for Hoover, it was normally wet sieved. If this was a, a core, it could have been wet sieved over a three inch diameter or two inch diameter sieve. Uh, this is what we do nowadays, the size of samples, four inch diameter cylinder. And this is the concrete as it is. It's not wet sieved with the one inch or three quarter inch diameter. All right, so moving on to the last piece, placement. You know, I, I've seen the videos. I own, we, we have one of the DVDs. Right. And watching them pull open the chute from the bucket cranes, or the crane, bucket cranes, I say that right? From the buckets, yeah. From the buckets, it's like, it doesn't, I know it's real. I really do know it's real. It just doesn't look real. It's so surreal seeing them yank this and yeah. this comes out and it's a beautiful mix. Yeah. A beautiful mix. Yeah. Now, if I remember correctly from the book, we had a two to four inch slump. Could be, I, I had to look, yeah. Two to four inch slumps, they used the buckets from cranes that were going across because they had... The cableways. The cableways, they had their own batch plants on site. Right, of course, have to have that. Have to have that, so some material was sent over to get tested, they would wet sieve it, make these huge two foot, three foot diameter, right. and all the way down. Um, and then when they placed it, I'm trying to remember the size of those blocks that they did. I think they're on the order of 10 feet, something, something like that. I thought they were 40 foot by 40 foot by 10 foot tall. That could be. Right. That could be, yeah. And of course, one of the most interesting things is when, when you see pictures of the checkerboard and how they work their way up to this one, I mean, the, the uh, great wonders of the modern world. Right. It's not just the dam that's a great wonder of the modern world. David said it was the innovative ideas that they had in the 30s, right? The, the yeah, coming out of the Depression. Like, whoa, like some of, the, some of the concept they had for drilling through the mountain, right. in and of itself, they had uh, competitions between the teams, who could drill faster. Um, so really just, uh, if you ever have the chance, Joseph E. Stevens' book, I don't know if you've read it, mm -hmm. a fantastic, fantastic journal of the, of the entire you know, going down the Colorado River, you know, starting to get the camps. I mean, there was a lot of people who sacrificed a lot with their families to build that modern structure. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, they had the construction camp, which is essentially Boulder City, Nevada today. Right. Oh, and it grew. <laughs> it started out as just Tent City. Right. And then it grew into a city from there. Right. Yeah. And of course, the thing about the checkerboard was the heat. That's That was the key to the placement was to control the heat in those large, massive blocks. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. You've got to watch the movies. The movies are just... Yeah. Love those movies. I'm going to yeah. watch them today. I'm going to take a break. <laughs> watch them as soon as you can. There you go. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. We hope you learned something today. We'll make sure to get some of these bad boys. I don't know how I'm going to put this in there, but we'll get some of these bad boys in there. Um, hope you enjoyed. Let us know if you got any concrete questions, concrete concerns. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Can't help penetrometer or weird. No, no, no. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. Go concrete! See you after all.